Beijing now has the best opportunity to attack Russia since Vladivostok is guarded by only two men and a dog. The Telegraph journalist George Allison emphasized that it is easier for Beijing to tear off a larger piece from Russia than from Taiwan. Moscow will not be able to resist strongly since almost all its forces are in Ukraine. Even before February 2022, the Russian armed forces had almost 5,000 artillery mounts, more than 2,000 tanks and 7,000 infantry fighting vehicles. China has almost the same indicators, but it has not fought with anyone and has not lost any of this. The Russian army has up to 550,000 servicemen, but China has up to 1 million. At the same time, we should not forget about the Navy. China is churning out its warships at such a speed that it could arm the entire world. And the new J-20 fighter has shown the large technological gap between Russia and China. There is no point for China to attack the island now since the US will stand up for Taiwan. However, no one will stand up for the Russian Federation. It is in Vladivostok that the headquarters of the Russian Pacific Fleet is located. It is for this reason that Beijing constantly competes with Moscow. Ellison recalled Putin's words when he said that little members of his family speak Chinese fluently. It is possible that the Russian president is thus preparing the future generation for new realities. The first person to suggest Beijing attack the Russian Federation was the president of Taiwan. Recently, Lai ching suggested that China use force to return its lands that Russia had once taken away. Instead of suggesting that China take back land from Russia, Taiwan should focus on Beijing's offer of a peaceful reunification. Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova stated, When asked to comment on Lai's statement, Zakharova said that the opinions of individual fringe politicians who are fixated on revanchism might be of interest to some but not to us. Lai, who is incited by the Americans to make such statements, should understand that they will not bring anything good to him or the people of Taiwan, she stressed. Zakharova reminded Taipei that Russia and China renounced all territorial claims with each other, as is stated in bilateral treaties on cooperation and state borders from 2001 and 2004, as well as in other bilateral documents. Russia has consistently adhered to the One China principle and regards the People's Republic of China government as the sole legitimate government of China, he said. The spokeswoman advised Taiwan's administration to pay more attention to the economic situation on the island and take a constructive approach towards the proposals of the People's Republic of China leadership for a peaceful reunification with mainland China. We are confident that our friends in Beijing have the same stance, she added. The best case scenario for the Ukrainian armed forces operation in the Kursk region is that Ukrainian forces will be able to contain Russia's advance in the Donbass until they achieve even small gains while holding the captured Russian territory with a sustainable military commitment, writes the American magazine Foreign Affairs. The offensive could also prompt changes in Western policy on the use of long-range strike weapons and inject much-needed energy into the thinking of Ukraine's allies about the way forward at this stage of the war, the publication says. It is also noted that the worst-case scenario is that in a few months Ukraine will lose significant tracts of land in the east and will not retain territory in Kursk that it could use as a bargaining chip. The offensive offers opportunities, but also carries significant risks and costs. In any case, Kiev hopes that the offensive in Kursk will spur a change in the perception that the war is on a negative trajectory, unlock additional material aid, and change Western restrictions on weapons, the magazine writes. It is noted that the Kursk operation will also force Moscow to think about the fact that Ukraine retains options and that the outcome of this war is still undetermined, although this offensive does not correct the current material imbalance in the war. The operation was well executed, quickly achieving a few limited but important objectives that would have made it an effective week-long raid. If it could have drawn significant Russian forces away from other fronts, the payoff would have been more than worth it. But so far, there is little evidence that this has been done. So far, Russia has pulled back from Zaporozhye and Kharkov while maintaining offensive operations around the eastern towns of Volodar, Pokrovsk, Toretsk and Kupiansk. Russia's response to the Kursk appears to represent an economy of force to deter an invasion as it continues to prioritize offensive operations in Donetsk.
Moscow may be exercising some caution, recognizing that in past years, Ukraine has tended to launch attacks on multiple fronts. This may not be Ukraine's only planned offensive, the article says. It is noted that Ukrainian troops are currently digging in, in Russia, and creating their own military administration in the region, intending to hold the Kursk cauldron for the foreseeable future. Much depends on how Moscow reacts. If Russian forces rush Ukrainian lines, Kiev could force Moscow to fight on its own terms by increasing pressure along the entire front. Kursk could weaken Russia's offensive power by taking the fight to Russian territory. Moscow could also feel compelled to create a significant operational reserve and deploy larger garrisons along its border. This would also reduce the combat power Russia could have to fight in Ukraine, the magazine writes. The publication added that Kiev will have to choose whether to hold on to what it has or invest more resources in the Kursk operation to force Russia to undertake a much larger effort to counter it. But the risks should not be underestimated.